Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, full screen. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Lord, I don't know if y'all can hear or see me yet, but y'all let me know. I'm a trying here. Let's see. Let's see. Whoops. Keyboard. I know, yeah. There's a bunch of people in the one for Monday. Um, maybe somebody can pop in there and tell them to come refresh YouTube and find the one that I just posted up for tonight. That would be awesome. Right. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Oh, Georgina said yes. Okay, great. Howdy, howdy. Okay. Uh, yep, there will be a class tonight. Uh, let's see. You passed your exam, Brittany, that you took on Saturday. Oh, thank you so much for coming in to chat to let me know. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you. Yay. That's awesome. I think I have... Oops, wrong one. Um, let's see. Do I have... Nope, 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 none of that. There used to be a little thingy I could hit. Oh, yeah. Let's see, effects. Nope, wrong one. Sound effects. There we go. <laughs> oh, that was loud. <laughs> But there, I found it. <laughs> Congratulations, Brittany. How's it going? All right. I have some cool questions for tonight. You have typed. I know. I'm pretty sure I do have typed the wrong date because I was rushing to recreate tonight's live. But it says it's scheduled for 8-4, but let me get in here and I can edit it real quick. Um, where is my edit? Edit, edit, edit. And we can put 8-4 and then just hit save. There we go. There we go. There we go. Done, done, done. Okay, now it says 8-4. And now if I can get my video to hush up <laughs> and not talk behind me. There we go. Perfect. All right, fix that twinkle. Lord, I can't send you any YouTube money. Uh, my IT director changed all my passwords today because he figured out my passwords were not more than eight numbers long or whatever, and he was not having that. He wanted them 16 digits long, and I'm like, dude, I'm 52 years old. I can't remember that many digits in one thing. 
he did not care and so now I'm locked out of my bank account I gotta <laughs> figure out the password so I can get back in there so I can send you some money to uh, give away as gifts but uh, we'll we'll work on that this weekend <laughs> one more thing to work on uh, but my um, the last item to make my new laptop is in the door. UPS delivered it today. Thank goodness. And we are ready to roll with that. I have um, a ton of questions that I didn't finish with um, my duck class this morning. So I want to finish those for tonight. Um, so y'all are going to get a treat and get to see some questions that I prepared for the duck class this morning that we didn't get to. We did a lot of questions. We just didn't do all 50 of them. I was trying to do 50 questions in two hours, but there was a lot of teaching that went in on it, so I didn't get there. <laughs> I was trying not to talk too much, but um, I was just doing a lot of training. So um, I did add a few more questions in, like this one I wrote for tonight. Um, as an afterthought that I thought was really cool, um, an order of coding for an injury patient with HIV. So an example of a asymptomatic patient, no, a symptomatic patient, HIV patient is at initial visit for a sprained ankle and is pregnant. What's the order of how you would code this visit. Do we do pregnancy, ankle, then HIV? Do we do ankle, HIV, and pregnancy? Because she's symptomatic HIV. Do we do ankle, pregnancy, and HIV? Or do we do pregnancy, HIV, and ankle? Let y'all work on that while I am catching up with chats, both on TikTok and on YouTube. How's everybody doing today? Any questions for me today, guys? Anybody have any questions? Congratulations. Twinkle is applying for new jobs. If y'all could send her some good vibes on that. Confirming. Let me go tell Travis. He's still too loud. He's killing me today. I did a TikTok with him today. It was really funny. Travis, turn that off. I don't want to see you on it. That's really bad language. Stop it. Y'all two got to stop. Okay, I'm live. If y'all are going to fight on that hoverboard, I'm taking away the charger again. You hear me? Y'all could be charging another one. All right. They're done. I purchased, they have three hoverboards in this house, and they lost all three of the chargers for them. So I finally broke down. It's been a year. And ordered one charger off is wheeling around on this hoverboard in the house because it's all tile and uh, they are just acting a fool right now just acting a fool <laughs> but it's Friday and they're so excited they have not had um, Friday off of school in a long time and they have it all year long they have their first year of high school and they don't have school on Fridays how lucky is that you're looking for a job, too, and you have an interview on Wednesday. We're going to send Holly some positive 
thoughts that she gets through this interview for Wednesday too. That's great. I had a practice question that a patient had a 2-0 lesion and I was stuck on 11442. Let's go see. 114 1144 2 Okay. Excision of a benign lesions. If it is of the face, ears, Eyelids, nose, lips, mucous membrane. It has to be a benign. Or would we have been 405? Is that a nerve? What is that? 405? I don't think it's a nerve. 405 digestive system? 405. 405. 10. Or... An excision of the lip, transverse wedge excision with primary closure. Mm. I have let's see, biopsy if visually scaling, fissuring, plaques, or other lesions. AKA terms, a aspersion. What the heck am I? What the heck am I typing on that? Let's see. I have a b s c i s s i o n. I also have e x t i r p a t i o n. I have e. Yeah. Just in the header where the word excision is here in this lippy area. It says also lips, skin, muscle, mucosa into three main regions, cutaneous, versmillin, and mucosa. Mm. Excision of the lip versus... An excision it can't be a skin tag if we're gonna be one one four four O and they're supposed to be lesions. So was the lesion a neoplasm? If it was a neoplasm C I C A T R I C I A L F I B. Oops. Ooh, I was not on the keyboard properly. Sorry. Hold on. Um, neo P L A S M plasm C I C. No. A T R I C I A L F I B R A O U S N T L M A. T O R Y congenital gen I T A L C Y S T I C L E I L E I S O N no Nevis. If it's these, it equals your one one four four two. If we're going to be that, lip Transverse wedge, if it's the W-E-D-G wedge equals 40510. Does it say anything about a wedge or any of these type of things? I wonder. 
What did it say we were removing? Was there any pathology that says you got stung too? Oh my gosh, I got to show y'all. Travis has never been allergic to anything in his entire life. He's been stung by um, bumblebees, sweat bees, um, mosquitoes all of his life. And he has got some major major things that have blown up on his skin right now. I don't know. It's pretty pretty bad. He's never allergic to anything. Oh, I can't change the screen because I have it on uh, Tiki Talk mode. Let's see. I have to go here. And then I can add that, which he's got some, and it's probably not going to show because of this Thing, but he's got some impressive bug bites that came back home from high school with. I don't know what the building is filled with, but he's never been allergic to anything. And he ended up having a bad allergic reaction to something. I don't know what. Oh, that's not helpful. Let me get full screen here. Here we go. Back to that. Had some bad reactions to something. I don't know what. Whatever bit him had some really bad. Something or another in their mouth before they got a hold of Travis. All right, let's see. Four wasp. Good God, those hurt so bad. I don't know. I hope that helps with the excision of the lip. You have to take shots for it. Good gracious, go kart. All right, what did you guys come up with the HIV thing? We have a symptomatic HIV patient here for their initial visit for a sprained ankle and they're pregnant. What's the order of coding? What are we going to code? Thank you, Go Card. I hope you do too. I got stung by a yellow jacket one time right in the center of my back and it was painful to even just wear clothes. It was so bad. It was awful. I bet, Holly. Good gracious. Some people say D. I've seen that quite often. What does TikTok think? What do you guys think? I've got B's, D's. So remember, when you're coding a situation, what are they here for today? They're here for a sprained ankle. Ankle's going to go first. So we can get rid of A and D first off the bat. What code takes precedent over all other sections? And that's how you answer this one. We know that pregnancy is the hierarchy of all the other sections. So pregnancy is going to go next and then your HIV. So C is your answer. I didn't see many people say C, but a lot of people on Tiki Talk did. Good job. Good job. I wrote that question. I hope you liked it. What about bones that may develop in a tendon are called what kind of bones?
I wish I remembered the question. I just knew it was an excision of the lip, but this still helped. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. That's awesome. What do you guys think about this question? Is A, perfect, good job. Humerus is an example of a flat bone, irregular bone, short bone, or long bone. What do you guys think? That's cute. We got some D's on YouTube. Nothing on TikTok yet, but I'm not sure if TikTok's working. Sometimes it doesn't. Let's see. Long bone. Good job. What about this particular word? I'm not going to try to attempt to say it. Is a defect of which component of the eye? Which component of the eye would we be would be affected by this diagnosis? Those kids are not going to calm down at all. Okay, bring your hoverboards in here. Now this is being so loud, I know it. He's not stopping, and you're not helping. So y'all have to bring your hoverboards in here. of A's. Let's see. Cornea. Good job. Good job. Where is this located at? Between two lungs, between two chambers of the heart, between the phalanges, or between the small and large intestines? What do you guys think? Yep. Between two lungs. Good job. Which of the following is characterizes the disorder of this? I've got to go get those kids. They crashed into the kitchen table. <gasps> All right. Dystonia. Which one? 
slowness of motion, difficult swallowing, impairment of speech, or abnormal muscle tone. What do you think? Abnormal muscle tone. Good job. Good job. Fracturing this bone involves what area? Skull, shoulder, pelvis, or leg? Try starting this over again and see if this works better. We'll see. Socket of the hip bone, which is the head of the femur fits into, so that would be pelvis. Yep. What about this particular vocabulary word? You might see this question at some point in your life. Is this a fungal infection, bacterial infection, viral infection? or a bacterial. We have two that say bacterial. One of the sweat gland, one of the nail. What do you think? Super important vocabulary word for a medical coding exam. Got A's and C's? No one on TikTok yet. Let's see. Fungal infection of the hair. That is A. All right. Back down to CPT coding. So remember, this is what's for my duck class, so it's more advanced, and I don't cover up the questions. So just because I'm going to show the questions with the codes doesn't mean you're going to stop doing what you're supposed to be doing. Don't read one word of the question. Let's go to our codes. We're going to do our process of elimination. That means we're going to just look at the codes just as numbers, and we're going to take it one thing at a time. We've got all five there. We've got three that have five nine in it, and only one that has five eight. So if I'm looking for the process of elimination or looking for similarities and irregularities, B is my irregularity. And then when I get down to here with the third digit, I have two that have the eight in it and only one left over because I would have gotten rid of B, right? So then this with the three remaining answers, makes A an irregularity now. So now I'm left with just two answers with the 598 numbers. And I would go look up the differences between this CPT code and that CPT code before I looked at my question, see what that difference is. Whatever that difference is, is the only thing that I'm going to look through the question for. I'm not looking to read anything else in that question. So 9, 8, we're after the OB ones. 9, 8, 12, and 40. So 12 is a treatment. 40 is, yep, yep, yep. I can't say these words on live. So one of them is incomplete. 
and the other one is a D and C. So we're just going to check our question for those differences. What do you guys think? I see D and C. Do they both have D and C in them? Do we know? Do you know? This one also uses E, D, C, and E. 40 is D and C, but do you know what 12 is? What do you have in your notes? Yep. I've heard that question or that vocabulary term. It's a rash. It's just common hives since we're talking about um, Allergic reactions and stuff. It's kind of funny. This one, my notes. Oh, let me see. What have I got right here? Mm. See if I can't. Oh yeah, I can't because I gotta hit the escape button here, and then I gotta get my mouse over here on this. Okay, good. And then I hit my escape, and then I can hit this. No, this one, and turn on my camera. Okay. So for these codes, the twelve. What I have in my notes is this is a D, C with E, and that 40 is just a D and C. So prepping these codes before you start your exam will help out a whole bunch on your exam. You'll know exactly what to look for since this one is includes the E and this one does not. We know our answer is C. Super helpful to have those books prepped ahead of time. Let's look up our differences between our codes. Remember, don't go looking at the question yet. Let's go look at our 571 codes. And see what our differences are. Five, seven, one. Five, seven, one, oh, six. Okay, we're removing part of the blank wall. I don't know if I can say that. Uh, nine, five, seven, one, oh, nine is we are the tissue that runs along the side of the blank canal and under the blank wall. That's what we're removing on this one. So the wall and along the sides of the canal. 
the first one is just of the wall. And then that was the 07, 09. 09 is a biopsy. This one's the biopsy. This one's the wall. And the 10 is a complete, complete. That's a complete, not just partial. We did the wall and surrounding tissue with a lumpectomy. and a lymph node sampling biopsy. What do you guys think? Would we be billing two codes? One code for all of this? Are we under this header, which is excision? All these codes are under excision. If you look at the 566, sorry, not excision, they're incision, sorry. Right, no, I'm under excision. I was right. These are under the excision, and then the five. Six six five six six is under also excision, so that's not helpful. But it's radical. Yeah, this is excision too, but this is radical. What do you guys think on this one? Super difficult question, actually. I think. Because it sounds like they're making it look like they're doing three different procedures and they threw the bilateral in on you, making you think that it's something that's going to be Totally crazy, but if you keep in mind that your children codes include whatever your mom is doing, so the 57109 equals whatever is also in 106 plus whatever they're saying in 109, that helps out. The, the 110 is its own parent code, so it's only doing what it says because it's its own parent. But if you remember that this one includes what's also in, an, in its mama code, you'll see that the 106 is everything because the semicolon doesn't start till the end of the descriptor, so everything in there. The removal of the vaginal wall is there. And then you also get the, the 109, the removal of the tissue. Then you get the bilateral pelvic lymphectomy. And you get the para-aortic lymph node sampling. So everything, all three or four of those procedures are all in C. But a lot of beginner exam takers don't remember that the child code includes everything that mama does up until the semicolon. So that one's super cool. I like that one. All right. TikTok so that that's not on there anymore. Okay. If we're doing the process of elimination on this one, 
We've got threes. We've got two that have the fives in them. Let's go see if we're there. Five, two, three, five, one. Five, two, three. Five, two, three, five, one is diagnostic. What header are we under? Diagnostic. We are under uterine and pelvis. Uterine and pelvis. Cystoscopies, catheterizations. Uterine and pelvis. 52. Where are we at? 52 is removal of stones. Stones. Did we do what is included in MAMA, which is a urethroscopy and a uretoscopy? What have we got going on here? We did the cysto-urethroscopy. Good. Cysto. And cysto. I don't see anything about a ureteroscopy. Ureteroscopy is in the 50 and the 51 and 52. And I don't see that one in here. So I guess we're not doing A or B. So let's go see the 5, 2, 3, 2 that is the uroscopy with removal of stones, good, and then 30 is with manipulation. Did we manipulate or not? I don't remember seeing any, yep, 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 yep. There's the word manipulate. So awesome, just word matching. What do you guys think the answer is? Radical means it would be extremely deep and extensive procedure. It would have to say... Um, Usually the radical procedures are like mastectomy. We're not only removing the breast tissue, but we're removing the lymph nodes and all surrounding tissue like the areola and just all the lymph nodes in the armpit. We're going as far and as deep as we can and removing everything. Pretty radical. So it would have things being said like extensive so since we see the word manipulate, yep, we are going to be C. Perfect. I'm not going to do the next one. I'm going to let you guys do it because I make it seem so easy. I'll tell you what the differences are in your descriptors. i tell you which codes to look for. What about these? What I would recommend is you've got two codes that are in the 74s and two codes that are in the 72s. And I find a lot of times if your second and third digits are different or bundleable like this, then you'll find two different headers. Not the CPT code descriptors themselves, but the header before the descriptors, you'll see a difference. And you can look for that difference in the question 
and have a way to get rid of two answers pretty quickly if you go look for those differences first before you worry about the actual CPT code descriptor. So try this question without me helping too much. See what y'all get. Let me know in chat what you think the answer is. Let's see. Let's go look up 57296. What header is that under? Where's your header? Sometimes you have to go pretty far back. Okay. And then what's the header for 574? Ooh, I know what the differences are. Anybody know the differences between the headers? What's the difference between the 72 versus the 74? Did y'all find your differences yet? Howdy, howdy. Hey, MK, good to see you. Yes, you can travel with this job. Absolutely. Practice, Miss Flower Power. You have to practice questions, and you have to do this one at a time. So without a board, without anything to write on, and not being able to write in your book, if you're going to take the exam by yourself, you're going to have to keep these things in your head. And that's why I'm only looking up at the differences between just two codes. Two codes, the 72s and the 74s. I can keep two in my head without having to write out anything and looking to see what my differences are. Then you can get rid of this and this. But... It's going to take a lot of practice with a lot of questions to be able to do this without any pen, paper. You're going to have to live and breathe practice questions every single day until your exam. And if you practice enough, you will be able to build your own strategy in your own head of how to do this without a whiteboard, markers, and pens, and paper, and all that stuff. It's not easy, but you can. Lots of fingers in the book, <laughs> holding your places. Anybody know what the difference is yet? Repair and, I agree with the repair. Repair and, nope, what's your header? What's your header for the 574s? Um, maybe. 574, 15. Yeah, this one is manipulation, so yeah. And then the other one, the 7426, that's what I was looking at, is a scope, scope. And then this is a repair, and this is a repair. Did we do a scope or a manipulation? I don't see those. So I would get rid of the scope and I would get rid of the manipulation out of the two repairs. Now, what's your difference between those two CPT codes, the 95 and the 96? The 95 is what versus the 96? What's our differences between those two CPT codes?
Good job, Holly. Yes, Scope. Good job, Coca Heart. Yep, perfect MK. So we're left with B and D as possible answers. But our differences between those two answers is the approach. Good job. One is vaginally. Oops, I'm not sure if I can say that. And then the other one is abdominal. So how was our approach? Dorsal position. What does that mean? With a retractor, what did they do? Hmm. That means, yep, that stirrup position that we all do not like, and it's very intrusive. But also, when you think about abdominal position, usually there's an incision. So, good job, Magpie. I know you're trying. She was trying to open the door for herself, but she couldn't get to it. D is your answer for this one. Good job. Here's the next question. Look at your differences between the 93 and the 83 first. Then look at your question to see if you're doing the 93 or the 83 first. Let me go let her out real quick. Okay, Magpie. You tried. I know you tried. It's right here. Look, look, Magpie. Look how pretty you are. Oh. Look, 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 look. You tried. She knew she had to push the door handle down. She just couldn't pull it backwards, too, at the same time. Maybe she'll get there one of these days. 644. Four. 83 versus 90. Oh, yeah, we've got different headers. Yep. Paravitebrial versus somatic nerves. Ooh. Nice headers. Good job, MK. What's everybody on TikTok saying? Our mama code for the 83 is pretty far back. We're doing anesthetic injections or steroids versus a diagnostic or therapeutic Faucet joint agent. So, what did we inject? A steroid. So, are steroids diagnostic or therapeutic, or are they anesthetic? Are we going to do the 83s or the 93s?
therapeutic. Mm-hmm. It is going to be therapeutic for pain management. That means therapeutic. So we're not doing the analgesic one. We are doing the therapeutic one. You find that information at 64490 and code 64400. You have to go look at the parents of both these sets of codes. So since we're doing therapeutic, we are going to get rid of B and C. Now we just have to decide if we're A or D. If we're going to use our 94, 94, we would have had to have bilateral? No, second level. Second level. So 93 is one level. Ninety four would be a second level. If we're going from L five to S one, how many levels is that? Do we count these as sorry, I'm trying to get it to stop doing that? Stop highlighting. There we go. Is this a level and this a level to equal two? Or does these two together equal one level? That's what they're testing you on on the exam. You probably see a question like this on the exam in this area. Good job, MK. It is A. Get this answer down here with the rest of the answer. That is only one single level. If you're going from L5 to S1, it is always considered one level. You'd have to be going from L4 to S1 to be two levels. Those differences between those levels is documented in muscular skeletal, and they have a picture. Um, let's see, what page number is that on? If you're in the 2023... AMA CPT book, you're on page 116, where they describe or show you the differences between the vertebral body and the intervertebral spaces. And if you're in the 2022 book, you're going to be on page 132. Remember, don't look at the question yet. Let's look at our codes. We've got, let's see, we've got one, three, four, and four. So we've got two that are in the 40s. I don't know. It's a good place to start. So 63042, oh, what's going on in that code? Six three zero. Six three zero. Forty two. And forty seven. What header are we under? We're under lenectomies. Posteriorly, lenectomies. 
we're posterior. Right? And 42, 47. And then, yep. So what did we do? We didn't do a lenectomy. Nope. Because we did a hemi and a foreman. So we're not neither one of those. All right, let's go back to the drawing board. 63017. 63017. Is a lenectomy? Nope. What about the 3030? There we go. We've got the hemectomy. Yep. We are D. And when I eliminated the 63017, I really technically didn't have to go look up D because if you've already eliminated three answers and you only got one remaining, don't hang around during your certification exam to just verify that that is the right answer. Just pick it and go. Don't second guess yourself and don't waste time looking up an answer when you've already eliminated the three other answers. That's just a waste of time and you need all those precious seconds you can. It is a crazy race and it will, it, everything that's written on these exams is meant to slow you down. So yeah, don't hang around verifying answers are correct when you've already eliminated everything else. Trust your process here and keep moving. All right, we can't do the process of elimination really with these because they're all in a row. So let's go run to the first one in numerical order, 67901. I just look up two codes at a time for differences because even with pieces of paper and stuff that I can write on, um, I still have a hard time remembering four codes and what their descriptors mean in my head. So I just like to eliminate two at a time. Keeps me in practice for doing things when I don't have the ability to use pen or piece of paper. 67901. Perfect. We're under repair. Three. Includes tightening of the muscle that controls the um, eyelid movement. So it would be internal with mama, which is the muscle covers the forehead, uh, fascia connect tissue from cadaver. Ooh, neat. We have cadaver. So are we doing a repair with the internal muscles? Alleviator or torso, internal movement. They're not going to be very helpful. They're doing the Muller's muscle. We do have tarsus listed. Not tarso, but tarsus listed. We do have leviator listed. Let's look at the 06 and the 08. What are our differences there? Our six has the sling in it, and our 08 is the Muller's muscle. There we go. We found it. Word match. Easy peasy. Gonna be our D, right? Yep. 
Perfect. Good job, MK. Go Kart says hello, MK. Perfect. Good job on TikTok and YouTube. Just matching up. Word matchy. Don't get stressed about all the codes that are coming after all this. Just look up your differences between your 12 and your 14. Then only look for that difference in the codes in the question. So 613, 613, 12. Ooh. Well, I've had to have done this question recently. We've got our supra and infra differences. I love it. I go through the book and highlight the differences between our supra and infra throughout this entire chapter. It helps out a whole bunch so that you remember to come through here and look to see if you're supra or infra. Or something else but we've got supra right there that way you know which one to look for so we're gonna keep our 12s we'll get rid of our 14s so now we just need to know would we be s065 or an S063. Because the that code's the same and that code's the same. Now, if you're looking for the process of similarities, you'll see that one of your throwaways has the same answer as one of the answers you have left over right now. That always clues me in to let me know that I think a is our answer without looking up the diagnosis code in the diagnosis code book. If it was me and my exam question, I would pick A and move on to my next question. It's not always like that in every question, but if there's a hint like that, I like to utilize it. What do you guys think the answer is? And then we're going to do some lab and path questions. Fun times, fun times. What did you guys decide? AAA all around? Yep, perfect. Here's your first lab and path question. We've got a difference between these codes. We've got the 000 and the 01 and the 02. Look up those differences. If you want to use the process of elimination, keep B and C because those have the same answer. And then just look up the differences between your 62 and 47. Then check out your question to see if you have the correct answer. Let me see if I can't make that a little smaller so everything could be all in the screen a little bit. There we go. Let me check on Travis real quick.
nice and neat too, Travis. Chloe, 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 Chloe. All right, I'm back. What did you guys think? We have a dipstick with microscope. Which one of our codes does, and these codes are frustrating to find too, when you're very first starting out and trying to find codes in this, these books. They get pushed all out of the way because all the other codes are all scrambled around. So the ones that have micro are 000 and 01. 02 has no microscope and neither does 03. So that helps out a little bit. We do have micro. O2 does not have micro. O1 is automated. Is there anything about anything being automated? Nope. So we can get rid of A. Then it is just a difference between your 62 and your 47. So eight two nine eight two nine forty seven and sixty two. Ones quant. And I color-coded every single code throughout the entire CPT book. Quant has one color and Qual has another color. And then our other glucose is blood glucose with the monitoring device. The other one is a glucose quantitative except a reagent strip, so you can't use a reagent strip. What did they use? They used a reading device in the office. What would that have? It would have a reagent strip, wouldn't it? So we can't use the 47 because that says no strip. And you have to know that the 47 or that a reagent strip would be used in a glucometer to do the blood sugar. It's just like one of those home meter tests that sucks up the blood in the little strip and then tells you the results. So you'd have to know. You can put the word glucometer beside the 62 CPT code so that you can at least know that if you're using a glucometer, it's going to be the 62. It would not be the 47. And that'll help out for the exam. Yep, yep, yep. All right, H. pylori. It's, uh, mostly elderly patients catch this, and they need to be treated with two different antibiotics, and they catch it in the air, but it affects the tummy. We've got three of them with the 8-3 code. So I'd start out there. The two that are the closest is the 13 and 14, so I'd even move closer to those. The difference between the 13 and the 14, one of them is drug administration. The other one is isotope, right? So let's see, what did we do? We did a breath test. Which one do you think is the answer for that one? Yes, you can use any color pens you want to make notes. I recommend no ballpoint. You know, the ones that have the rolly ball in them. 
that you have to roll the ball across the paper to make notes. Um, you have to apply too much pressure to the pages, and they're super thin, really thin this year. So I use markers, and I use a 0 0.4 fine tip marker that is like a paintbrush, and you just kind of glide across the paper, and it makes the marks. Perfect. 13 is perfect. Good job. Yep. Breath test. Just do a match. Word match. All right. We've got 880. Oh. Then we have two fours. We've got the 45 and the 40. What's our differences between those? Look, get all the washcloths right here. Get them folded. No. Go fold those washcloths. He is on fire today. We have an autopsy. Ooh, I think they have one of these on the exam, but I think it's like of a child or a newborn. And you need to know, like if it's SIDS or something like that, what kind of autopsy would it be? It's not criminal, but it's still something we want to investigate, so... Happy Friday, Sharon. Good to see you. Got a couple of C's. What do you guys think? A's and C's. Good job on that C. Perfect. They did not need to document any corner. All right. These. We've got three of them that are under the 72s. And then the 9 and the 10 are super close. So I'd start out there. 872. Oh, 09. And 10. Wet mount versus complex stain. But they're 
both smears for gram, bacterial, fungal, yep, yep, yep. Which one would be complex, ovum and parasites, and which one would be wet mount, saline, KOH, those kinds of things. Thank you guys for all the thumbs up on YouTube. I hope this is helpful. Y'all are awful quiet tonight. Thank you, Twinkle. Who won? Georgina. Yay. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I hope that YouTube membership helps out a whole bunch. YouTube has separated out my videos. I've got three levels now. I think they're forcing everybody to have three levels. So the repeat workshops are on level one. Level two is the podcast with the workshops. And then level three is the workshops, podcast, and the replays of the book prep videos. A lot of people have D in the answer here. And you would be correct. Good job. D is the answer. Perfect. Good job. All right. This one. Let's see. What have we got? We got all. Well, we got three of them with 76. Right? And then 40 and 41 are the closest. Let's go see what those are about. 8, 7, 6, 41. Mm, the 8, 7, 6, 23 is one of my pink codes. Let's see. 8, 7, 6... 40. Direct probe or amplified probe? Did we do direct or amplified? Those are my differences. This one was on your exam. Oh my. Let me copy that one down and post it. on my little scavenger hunt area. A lot of times it's not what you're testing, it's how the test was done. Sorry. MRSA or strap. Yeah, but the only difference between the codes is amplified or direct. So I just worry about that. 41 is amplified. So I would pick B as my answer and not even worry about MRSA or anything like that. That's the only one word that I would look up. B is your answer. Perfect, perfect, perfect. What about this one? Oh, the lovely vaccines. Modifiers. GW. QW. GA. Yep, those are all, yep, the QW is for the CLIA, uh-huh, yes, indeed. <laughs> mm. 
Let's see. We've got for vaccines, the very first thing I would have you do with vaccines is go look at the last two codes in your coding example. If there is a difference between the 71s and the 60s, this is a super easy way to eliminate two answers <clears throat> right away with these codes by just looking for the one word called counseling. So if you did counseling, you're keeping the 60s. If you do not see the word counseling or counsel in your exam question, then you're going to be 71. We do see the word counseling, so we know that we're going to get rid of anything with 71 in it. Super easy. That way you get down to 50-50 shot with these questions. This question is a difference between the 10 and the 07. So what's your differences between the 90710 and the 907? Oh, 07. What's the differences? And I'm going to go check Travis's um, closet. He has to do the towel closet and make sure all the towels are folded and stacked in the proper way. And I don't think he's doing it. I'll be right back. Let's see. Thank you, Melissa. Let's see. What have we got? Who won? Milo won. Awesome. You're welcome. I hope that helps you out a whole bunch. Yay. All right, what's our differences between the codes 90710 and 90707? What did you guys find out? What's the difference between those codes? MMR versus MMRV. Very good, Sharice. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. So one of them has four components in it, and one of them has three components in it. What was ordered was just an MMR, so we know we're going to keep our 07, so we can pick our C and move on with our day, right? Because the MMRV has chicken pox in it. It has varicella in it. Baby, don't worry about James. 
James will be okay, Travis. <laughs> he's panicking. James went outside to ride his one wheel, and he's not back yet. And he's, like, waiting for his brother to come back. And he thinks he's... He always worries. Worries, worries, worries. Worries more than I do. So sweet. All right. 963-69. Or is it code 963 65. Look up your differences between your codes. We've got infusions, right? What's our differences? 96369 nine, is subcutaneous and our 65 is intravenously. So did we do these IV or sub Q? How did we do them? Yes, the test is open book. Nope, we don't have to start stress about the timeses. They're perfect. Yay. All right. We've got a couple of C's. Yep, we did do intravenously, so we can get rid of A and B. Then it's just a difference between C and D. If it was D, we would have had to have spent one hour and 31 minutes or more using the infusion. We only did one hour and 15 minutes, so we can't bill but just C. C equals zero, well, technically anything over, we gotta be 15 minutes or more, but um, so, 16 minutes plus up to one hour and 30 minutes. Anything one hour and 30 minutes or less for infusion will always be billed with the 96360. Anything billed for 131 and up will be here. There's a rule in your guidelines in the E&M section that says something about if your add-on code is about time, then before you meet enough level or enough time to build that level, you have to spend half the time listed in that code plus one more to be able to bill it. It's up in the front in the very beginning of the CPT book. C is your answer. All 
Oh boy. Don't let this one scare you. We have two that start out with the 28s. And then they have the same answer here. It's just a difference between do we use the 78 and 78 or do we use the 58 and the 58? What's our differences between those modifiers? 58 is a staged procedure. 78 is an unplanned return. So what are we doing today? The patient was scheduled to return for surgery. So that's a planned return. So using the process of similarities, I would get rid of B and D. I would only look at my differences between A and C, which are just modifiers. And the only one that is planned returned is our staged. So I would pick C and move on with my day and not worry about whatever's going on in this descriptor question because it's just full of propaganda made to confuse you. I hope that's helpful. Here's your answer, C. I don't know why it's so small. All right, let's look at this one. Travis is slapping the heck out of his bug bites. I don't know what got into him, but something bit him. He is never allergic to anything his whole life. Whatever got a hold of him this time, not made him happy. So looking for the process of looking for similarities, I see that B and C have the closest numbers with four digits all the same. So I'd go see what my difference is between my five and my nine. So we've got nine, five, one. Nine, five, one. Forty five. Oh, no. Allergy testing. I always have a hard time with these. Nine, five, one. 45 is a parent code, and then our 49 is a child underneath it. 45 is a single stinging venomous thingy, or did we do five single stinging insects. How many insects did we have? We have single. They're both single, but this one has five doses. How many did we have? We had five doses. So it is going to be C. They're both single, venomous, but one has five doses in it. 48 has four doses in it. Three has or forty seven has three, forty six has two. But the way they write the descriptors, it makes it look like there's multiple stinging insects in each one, but it's just the amount of doses that are in them. It's very confusing the way they write these descriptors. But yes indeed, C is your answer. Perfect. E and M 
all these visits are in the ER. 82 is straightforward. 83 is low. 84 is moderate. And 85 is high. They're probably not going to give us MDM or time. We just have to decide based off of the three elements of MDM, the amount of problems that were done, the amount of data that was done or reviewed, and then the amount of risk. So they're asking us to do the decision for emergency surgery of the removal of appendix. So if a patient came into the ER and they made a determination that they needed to have an emergency surgery to remove the appendix, what level of risk are we at for this EMM visit? Are we straightforward, low, moderate, or high? <coughs> <laughs> What's wrong, MK? I do make it sound easy. Hey, thank you. I hope it helps. <laughs> What's everybody say on YouTube? Have I got anybody on YouTube? Thirty five people. So we can get a couple of people to answer out of thirty five that are watching on YouTube. What do you guys think? Be sure and don't forget about your lovely chart on page eight and nine of your CPT book. If you go over to the risk column under the high risk of morbidity from additional diagnosis and testing and treatment, there's a list of things that are high. There's a list of things that are moderate. There's just a few things listed as low or minimal. Try to word match something in this chart in that high risk table part. It's under the risk of complications and morbidity or mortality of patient management, those columns. If you do look on page nine, in that last column under high risk, um, third bullet point down does say decision regarding emergency surgery. If you do look at page eight, under the second bullet point, it says decision regarding minor surgery. And then there's also the third bullet point. It says decision regarding elective major surgery. But the only one that says emergency surgery is the one under high. Pages 8 and 9 of your CPT book. I'm on page eight and nine, and I'm right here. This is page nine, and I'm under the table all the way over here where risk is at, and then I'm looking at these bullet points that are listed right here. The third one down says a decision regarding emergency surgery, and I was just trying to show you the difference. If we were moderate, be over here in this one, this bullet point says decision regarding minor surgery or decision regarding elective surgery. But the only one that says emergency surgery is in our high right here for emergency surgery. Okay. 
We're on page nine of the CPT book. Let me get this thing back up. There we go. So yes, indeed, MK is correct. We would be a 99285. Absolutely. For the next one, we're not going to have MDM or time, but are we going to be minimal, low, moderate, or high for this patient? Our last sentence says, what is the MDM level for risk of complications for the patient? The sentence above it says the patient was given a prescription for clonidine patches, one milligram, once a week, for their malignant hypertension. Would this ENM visit be minimal, low, moderate, or high? Also based off of what you see on pages 8 and 9 in your CPT book. What did YouTube say? You think it's moderate? Malignant hypertension is something that's not going to go away, right? They're going to have hypertension for the rest of their life. We wrote a new prescription that they are going to have to refill for the rest of their life, and they're going to have to put a patch on once a week every week for the rest of their life. What do we call that? We call that a prescription drug management visit, right? Prescription drug management visit. Where is that located in your chart on page eight and nine? That's under your risk table. Which table? has prescription drug management in it? Is it low, moderate, or high? When you're looking through those columns? There you go, go cart. You got it. Yes, MK, you got it now. That is moderate. So remember, if we're writing a 30-day Rx, something that they're going to have to take every month for the rest of their life, that's always a moderate. The 7- to 10-day Rx for antibiotics could be low because they're going to get over whatever they have that's requiring the 7- to 10 days, but moderate means that they're never going to get over this. This is just to help with the symptoms of whatever they got going on. Yep, this one is definitely moderate. Got another cardiology one here. Ooh. Are we a 45 or a 46? Three of them are in 45s. One of them is in 46. Gonna check on Travis. He's already laughing. I know he's not done with that closet yet. 
see. Hang up your laundry or you're not going with me tomorrow, Jeff James. I'm going to double check. There are both on my list today. My goodness, I can't get them to do anything. All right, what have we got going on with this one? We've got right and left renal arteries. Mmm. You like this exam question, MK? Was it on your exam? I still got our E and M stuff going on over here. Gotta get that out of the way. That's unhelpful. Okay, we're definitely gonna get rid of our 46. We're gonna keep the 45s. Then we have to decide do we need to add radiology to that code? Our 36245 includes what? 36245. It's always good to go to the original code, see what it includes before you think about looking at that radiology code because you know it's going to be just whatever radiology it is. But you need to go to the original code to see if it already has radiology in it. So this is a selective catheter placement. With an expandable balloon. Do we have any do nots to say we can't use radiology with it or can use radiology with it? We have the three six in every single one of the answers. So you know that code is in the answer no matter what. The only difference is would we add a radiology to this or would we add this 51? Do we need to add anything to it? The more conservative you are, the better off. This one has three codes in it. This one also has three codes in it. This one has two. We've already eliminated this one that has two in it. The 
think we need the 51. The 51 is unilateral selective catheter placement. We already have selector, selective catheter placement being billed in the 45. How many selective catheter placements are we doing? We have one catheter that's being removed. And then a guided type catheter was being used after that one. So I don't think we could bill the 62, well, the, the 51 and the 45 together because they're both selective catheter placements. One of them's going in the first order of a main renal artery. Are we renal? We went femoral. We're not in the kidneys. We went, we might be getting to the renal artery, but we went in on the femoral. which is a lower extremity, lower extremity, which is where the 45 comes in. That's where we started at. That takes care of the catheter. Three, seven, two. It's in all the answers. We know it's going to be there. 37236. is our transcatheter placement with the stent. If I'm in the right code, 37236. This is where our angio angiography comes into play. Angiography. And there's our racer stent. Help hold up the walls was placed. Did we do anything else for this patient? 51. 51. 362. 51. Yep, I already decided that that can't happen because it's two selective catheters. Yep, I have to get rid of that. And since the 7236 already includes our angiography with the stent, we do not need to add an angio from radiology. So we know we get rid of A. That leaves us just B. And again, if you're just and have no clue 
always be conservative and pick the least amount of codes possible as far as all the other answers. The other answers both had three codes in them. Be conservative and pick the smallest amount of number of codes if you're just bubbling in and guessing. Yep. 45 and 47. Yep, it sure does. Same question. Did you get... You did them from top to bottom? Yes. Why are you so crazy tonight? You still itchy? A little. A little. Okay, keep putting on your cream. You can put some toothpaste on it, too. Just come look at the closet. I'm coming, I'm coming. Let me finish one more question with them, and then we'll be done. Or, no, that's it. That's my last question. I don't have any more listed in here. Y'all did them all. Oh, my gosh. That was a lot. I hope this has been helpful, guys. We did them all for tonight. That was good. Don't forget about that vocabulary term. Be sure you know that one for your medical coding exam. I will be back on Monday to do two more hours of free lessons for you guys. <laughs> You did perfect, Misha. Good job. I hope this has been helpful. Be sure and keep watching the replays on YouTube and on Facebook and on TikTok. Doing those thumbs up and um, making comments and engaging. It's helping out the algorithm. I'm trying to get on some real teaching sites and I know my Facebook is being evaluated for the next 30 days so the whole month of August if I can get into get enough engagement on Facebook um, with the videos there then maybe I can get into some sort of program there where I can get more teaching software of some sort or something so I'm hoping so if y'all have any time to let the Facebook videos just play and run on your devices, that would greatly help out for the month of August. I sent out a bunch of gifts for you guys today. My IT director, my oldest son, went out today to the post office and dropped off some stuff. So hopefully in the next three days, you, some people will get some goodies in the mail. I'm just picking people that have purchase stuff recently and sending out stuff um, randomly. So just going down a list. <laughs> and uh, I'll have some more stuff going out this week too. So I hope that is helpful. Only 15 thumbs up. Well, I'm happy to have the 15 we have. Thank you so much. You won today. Aw, it's awesome. You guys have a good weekend. I'm going to be out and about tomorrow. We've got a little road trip to take to pick up an item off of a Facebook marketplace for my oldest. And then hopefully when we get back Sunday, he can build me that new computer so that OBS will work a whole lot better for you guys on Monday. I do have a duck class coming up this Friday. If anybody wants two hours tutoring with me this Friday with any with special uh, difficult questions, that is open on my website at medicalcodingbygen.com. It's five hours for two hour, five dollars for two hours of um, tutoring with me, and we will try to do. 50 questions in two hours. <laughs> I usually end up getting uh, teaching quite a bit, so we might only get down to, done with 40, but we'll do our best to try to get done with 50 this Friday. But hopefully I will see you guys there. You're very welcome. No worries, April. Oh, my gosh, April. Girl, did you get them downloaded? Oh, my Lord, bless her heart. I'm so worried about you. It's like I just want to send my 
son to everybody's house to help them. Etsy sometimes is crazy. Girl, buy, get them from my website. They're a little bit cheaper on my website because I don't have to pay Etsy fees. So I always put them on the same notes or on my website at medicalcodingbygen.com. Plus, there's like an 18% discount that automatically applies to your cart when you buy multiple stuff on my website also. So they're a little cheaper and, you know, we don't have to deal with trying to figure out how to download files when it's from my website. The only thing you got to do on my website is download them within 30 days or your link doesn't work anymore. But I can always resend you the link. That's no big deal on my website. Huh? I'm coming to check out your work. I'm sure it's beautiful. I really appreciate your cooperation, Mr. Travis. Okay, he's having a fit for me to come look at his towels to see if they're done. You can purchase my notes at medicalcodingbygen.com. And um, I also have under the resources tab, there's a page called CPT Book Prep. It shows you eight pictures. Just click on each one of the eight pictures. It'll show you how to book prep your CPT book, your ICD-10, your, um, just keep scrolling down that page. But to see the instructions, you just got to click on the picture and it's all for free. Shows you how I did my notes in my ICD-10 book and my HIPPIX books. And I also have some one page tips for, um, certain guidelines posted on that page all for free too if you want to book uh, tutoring with me that's under tutoring tab and then if you want my notes they're under the shop and that's page by page of the cpt book or hip picks or uh, icd-10 book and all my notes um, just page by page so that you can copy them those are available on my website so and there's as you putting stuff in the Shopping cart discounts will automatically apply. That way you don't have to worry about uh, promo codes and stuff. So, and um, stuff is a little bit cheaper there because I don't have to pay Etsy fees on my website. So anyway, I hope that is super helpful for you guys. But yes, all the replays of the YouTube videos are on YouTube for free. Just be sure and hit your subscribe button. It's 100% free. And that helps out enough, too. And with the thumbs up, too, during the videos. Appreciate it so much. Put the street behind the name. So you hope it gets to you. Well, if it's PDFs, those are instantly downloaded. If you ordered a... a um, an ST behind your name. If you order cups or a... Um, something else what do you need st behind the name just the street instead of drive or something like that is your address really picky about that crystal let's see if you ordered a mouse pad with my mdm guidelines on them and stuff to keep on your desk or a cup well, i do see it they probably won't make this until monday crystal um. Oh, you did get the mouse pad and you got socks. Shut the door. You're my very first sock order. That's so cool with my little logo on them. I don't even own a pair of socks with my logo on them. I need to. You did get the mouse pad. That's awesome. They'll make it Monday and ship it out. Um, You need something on your... Okay, after the word division, you need the word street, S-T. I can edit it from here. So after the word division, I need S-T. You want the hoodie? Oh, yeah, but they're expensive, huh? I don't even have a hoodie. So S-T. Okay. 
And then do I hit save? What do I do? Ooh, I forgot to look what's where you're at. Hold on. Are you in Tennessee, Illinois, Texas, or Louisiana? Because, sorry, it's bringing me up to a different uh, screen, and now I don't know what state you're in. Um, Tennessee, Illinois, Texas, or Louisiana? Apparently, every one of those states has one of these streets. Louisiana. Okay. And I'm hitting save. Okay. Now your shipping address does have the word ST at the end. Perfect. Glad you spoke up while I was here and could do this because doing this through emails is a nightmare. So that's awesome. Perfect. I will go order those right now. I have to go to their website and pay for it. And then um, they will start production probably Monday. But they're really good and fast. You're welcome. Got it fixed for you and saved. I'm going to have to order me some socks because now I'm going to be jealous of you and I can't have that. So when I order your socks, I'm going to order me a pair too. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support. You're awesome. And I hope you love them. The mouse pad is amazing. I love it. I gave away mine that I ordered. I need to order another one too. All right, guys. I hope this is super helpful. Um, and all the stuff is located on my website, Ticker Talkers. So that is, I have to do it on the screen up here somewhere. Move, move, move. So medical coding. By Jen at no, dot com. So that's the website. Just go there. There's a ton of stuff free. Don't be afraid to click on some tabs and look around. There's free videos on there, free one page guidelines. There's a free blog. There's tons and tons of stuff. There's a free study group on Discord for you, and it's completely free and it's full of two years worth of practice questions and all kinds of stuff in my discord group you'll find that under the social media tab on my website so click around there's even a free exam on my front page of my website where you can test your skills on modifiers and see how well you do on the free exam before you even sign up for my website which is free but you do sign up for it if you want inside the website but um, I hope it, it's all helpful for you guys. I'm going to skedaddle and get out of here and go hang out with Travis and see how well he did on his chore. Because he is, where am I at? I got to find, okay, there we go. And I'm going to quit here. I might be live on uh, TikTok Saturday and Sunday, so look out for that. And I will post the replays on YouTube for the memberships if I do do that. And if nothing else, I will see you guys on Monday. Y'all have a great and safe weekend. I love y'all. See y'all later.